Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. In this episode I will teach you how to make cool looking blueprints of your craft using the Chronal Vessel Viewer. So this is the craft that we will be making today. So first step is get the Chronal Vessel Viewer mod for the Kerbal Space Program. I will post the link to it in the video description. This one is pretty much essential if you want to make um, cool looking plans as the its sole purpose is to extract your vessel and create a cartoon-esque picture of it. So uh, it's available on Curse. I'm not sure if it's available on Kerbal stuff. Probably it is. So. You download it and you install it like any other mod for the Kerbal Space Program. Then, next step is to load it in your space plane hangar or your vehicle assembly building and load the craft that you want to uh, blueprint. In my case, it will be the new SSTO <coughs> using the Mark IV parts. You can see it here, and I will uh, maybe post a later a video where I'm assembling it. If, if you're interested to see it, let me know in the comments. So, um, here in the bottom right you can see the two tabs containing vessel parameters. Vessel and resources. Uh, they come from Kerbal Engineer mod, and I will put the link into the description as well. Uh, depending on the situation, I write them down manually, uh, and uh, it's the vessel information and uh, the resources. So, the next step is that you create a screenshots using the Kerbal Vessel Viewer. Uh, when you load it up, um, you, this is the you get to the front view, and then just press screenshot. So, the next step is that I like to take a 3D picture of the craft itself. And as you can see, the Chronal Vessel Viewer will reflect the actual situation of your craft. So if you open a cargo bay, it will also open the cargo bay. So now using the controls, I'm tilting it to get a semi 3D view. And uh, one thing to note that what you're seeing here vertically will not translate one-to-one -to, -one to the actual screenshot. The actual screenshot area is a little bit larger. So don't be, uh, don't be worried if your plane has clipped a little bit out. But regardless of that fact, I like to uh, zoom in and out until I have my whole, uh, my whole space plane within the confines of this window. It takes a little bit of fiddling, but it's not that difficult. So, okay, screenshot, and now the next picture I will go for is the picture from the side. So you reset the view and start tilting the plane to one of the sides. Also, I'm like to close the cargo bay because we now do not need to display the cargo, it's more about the plane itself. Okay, and um, a cool trick is that you can use the gear of the craft to see if your plane was aligned properly. Assuming that you have put them correctly in the first place. So, zoom out a little bit, or a lot. As you can see, it's within the confines. Screenshot and revert again. And now the third picture I would typically opt for is the top-down view. And you can also play with the control. As you can see, I'm putting it down, but if you go all the way up, it will flip. It's a cool, handy feature, which uh, I found out by just testing it. So, okay screenshot and that's pretty much all the pictures that you want of your space plane. Now uh, the next step would be of the actual payload. 
So, but uh, I have the payload set up as a sub assembly in the vehicle assembly building. So that pretty much means I will take it there. I will load the VAB and I will, uh, so you can make a screenshots of sub assemblies if applicable. The whole purpose of this SSTO is to take an orange tank into the low carbon orbit and dock it with a space station together with this handy tug. Um, okay, so load the Kerbal Vessel Viewer and Kronal Vessel Viewer, sorry. And I would again here opt for the 3D view of the whole craft. Screenshot. It's always nice to show the payload in a separate uh, picture, whether it's a rover or a satellite, whatever. Then the next step is to find an appropriate blueprint background. So um, there are lots of them online. I would just Google for blueprint background and save it. By the way, this videos of the windows I have done with Bandicam, sorry for the logo, I mean I'm still evaluating the version. This is the first time I actually needed to take a video from the windows, not from the in-game. Otherwise in-game I use fraps. So anyway, save the image, just make sure that you're not violating any copyrights or that there are, the blueprint background is freely available. Okay, fine, and then press save. And then the next step would be to take the screenshots that you made using the Kronal Vessel Viewer to the actual, uh, to prepare. So they will be found in your game, in your screenshots folder, and they will be named like your craft that you are taking the pictures of. So. If you can see, I can highlighted all the pictures related and I copy them together with the background for convenience, basically. So I have everything in one place conveniently put. Now, the next step is putting it all together. And for that I'm using a Photoshop CS5, a little bit older version, but you can use any other picture editing tool, whether it's uh, uh, Paint Shop Pro or GIMP, it's entirely up to you. However, I will explain the procedure in Photoshop. So, I go for the uh, Magic Wand tool and I click on the background. Why? Because it's easy and it's monochromatic. Then, I would inverse the selection, So, and this will conveniently select only my craft. Um, then I would copy and basically paste it on the blue background as a new layer. Uh, and here's a handy tool, you can press the control and T uh, in, order to, um, in order to resize the craft. I don't know, I think it's transform or something. Anyway, I remember it as a control T. And um, make sure when you're resizing the craft that you link the aspect ratio so it doesn't get fumbled. Yeah. So, uh, and then you can put in, I typically put between 12 and 30% depending on the size when you are taking the screenshots. So you fiddle a little bit with it, and for example I like to put the big picture on the left hand side with the small technical details around it, and maybe top down view, front view, nifty align. That's com that part is completely up to you. So when you're happy with it, you, crack, you, you press the check mark, lock it in place, and I also tend to name my layers to call it SSTO 3D or something. Cool, with that picture out of the way, we go for the next one. Here I will take now the repeat process and now that simple rinse and repeat with other screenshots until you're happy. So select the background, inverse the selection and copy. And then what you do is you basically paste it as a new layer 
Sometimes it can happen that this picture end up off screen, but then you just have to press again the control T and try and find it. So once again, lock the aspect ratio and scale it down. And I would typically now put it on the sides. Rename the layer so you can more easily rearrange them if necessary. Then take the side view. Again, uh, one thing to note with this inversion, with selecting and inverting selection, if you have some transparent parts like girders, make sure that you select all the parts that contain the background because when you press inverse, uh, and copy it, you would otherwise get uh, the transparent parts um, transparent parts containing uh, a parts of the background. And that's something that you don't want in your picture. So, okay, side view put in place like this. And uh, now I'm thinking probably I will put uh, the other parts like above the plane. And so I have enough room for the side view and also for the payload. So you can see it put it on the side like this. Okay. Next one, top down view. Again, select invert the selection. I think the shortcut for this is Control shift i in Photoshop. And then again, once again, copy and paste on the blueprint background. Control t for the transformation, move it in the middle of the, before you resize it. and a little bit resizing front and back until you're happy with it. And you can slowly see like the plan emerging as it looks like so. Okay. So now we are pretty much done with the plane. Then we have uh, payload to pay attention to, which is pretty much similar thing. Also we what you want to put is a title and I would put the name, so space plane, SSTO heavy, mark 5, and uh, since I'm using Norse, uh, Norse uh, mythology um, names, I call it Yellerhorn. I'm pretty sure somebody will correct me. I'm not the best when it comes to the pronunciation. I think it's Yellerhorn or something like that. Um, all right. The name is in place and now let us see. Take the tank whichever picture you find the best. And yeah, so now the same thing, magic wand selection. And you can see here, I will also, this small part with the girders, I will try to manually add to the selection just to make sure that they don't show up like here and here. Fine. And now invert the selection. And once again, copy paste on the blueprint. Okay, uh, 
Okay, now that the Xiaomi resize it, it has gone away from the picture. If that happens to you, you can just increase the zoom level or increase the size and then it will show up somewhere again. Okay, I'm thinking putting it somewhere around here for easier convenience, resize it to a more acceptable level, like that. and then I will put usually uh, now it's time to put all the parameters that you have uh, written down and I have written down for the tank and the vessel the level on which you want to describe it it's entirely up to you so what I go for I write vessel and I write the delta V the mass the thrust to weight ratio and also the part count because if uh, like me you want to post your uh, vessel somewhere like a craft file for example like on the Kerbal X um, exchange then you might want to put also what's the number of the parts so that the people know um, so write the tank details and also the vessel details. Then you put the tank information and I typically just draw the line to highlight that this is kind of the um, to, to draw a connection okay well I'm not the most <laughs> adept with this okay so I just draw the line like this and then time to put the vessel parameters. And yes, this is pretty much it. After you have put the vessel parameters then it's all about save as like a picture, PNG, whatever and post it online. So that's pretty much it. I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions make sure that you post them in the comments below. I will probably also release a video on how to assemble this SSTO using the Mark IV components. Um, and also let me know if you're interested of me posting other videos of also assembling different craft. That's a new kind of series that I'm contemplating and if you're interested to see more of it let me know in the comments. If you like the video please do like the video and hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more. There will be lots more KSP con related content coming. Alright, anyway, thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off.